I am a uh, ConvertKit fan, uh, friends with Nathan Berry, the CEO, and think that ConvertKit is a wonderful email marketing tool. Uh, the gist of building this box works regardless of who you use, whether it's MailChimp or AWeber or HubSpot or whomever. Uh, we're basically going to be building the same sort of structure as we did with the, the author box. Um, but I will go into the newsletter signup page that is built. And this is also very simple. I'm going to just start with a group. I'm going to start with the heading. We're going to just say news oops, letter sign up. Uh, I will copy and paste the text to keep it simple. So inside that group, I'm going to add a paragraph, which is that copy. Uh, and then this here, I will walk through. Uh, this requires custom HTML block. Uh, this is JavaScript code that ConvertKit generates. Um, so if you have, again, a Weber or MailChimp, or there may even be some of these platforms that have their own block where you can actually just um, use their, activate their plugin, and then uh, have some sort of little UI UX uh, where it might say, you know, put in the, the MailChimp block. And then from there, because it connects through the API system, you know, it'll drop down a list of your form to include. But this is sort of the manual version of that. Uh, and so we've got that. These are the three things that we have in the newsletter sign up. Uh, similarly, I'm going to just go ahead and add a border. I will also add some padding. Newsletter sign up, I want to center. This paragraph text, I also want to center. Uh, and because I'm sort of a, the way this two lines reads, uh, the line height, you can see there's a little bit different line height here. I think in general paragraph, the 1.75 that Frost has works, but in smaller sections, it doesn't. So I am inside the paragraph block. I'm going to come over here to typography and click on line height. So I want to make that just a little bit smaller. So I'm going to do 1.5, just looks a little better in my opinion. Um, and I'm going to hit update and we can see where we're at. So. And this section right here is the, the the JavaScript code that you build your form in ConvertKit. You can change the colors there and make some setting changes there. Uh, now it's also possible, and I do this often, uh, where uh, with ConvertKit in particular, you can grab JavaScript code, you can get the the full HTML code, and often I'll do that where I'll I'll download that and strip out a lot of stuff from the HTML, like styling that comes with it, because I want to style it myself. Um, an example of that would be um, seen here on my personal website. This is that similar code. This is really inheriting all of the uh, input uh, styling and the button styling from the theme because I wanted to look a very specific way. So this is also convert kit code. It's all hard coded uh, HTML. So that's an example. Uh, you can see this is sort of like the generic convert kit form, which is generally easy for people to uh, implement. Um, and so, and then uh, similarly, to change the coloring in all of this, I'm inside the group. Uh, let's say I wanna go blue. I would just do, well, that's not gonna work because we'll do this instead because the button itself is blue. So we wouldn't see our button. See, we don't see the button. So if we change this background to maybe the darker color, that might be not the greatest accessibility. We'd have to run a test on that, but just to show quickly how it's done. And that is the newsletter sign up. And I'm going to do something really fun at the end here. So uh, I'll wrap this all together into like a, a nice little bow and, and to kind of put it into practical terms um, as well. And it's worth noting, uh, while some of these uh, block patterns or these groups generally end up inside of templates, the templates that are found within the site editor. I generally just, it's easier to just go into like a page or a post and I usually build out all my things there and then I'll copy it all and move it over. I'll show this all uh, as I get through all four of them because uh, I think that'll be really cool for people to see. But just because I'm so used to the general page editor, that's generally where I build all this stuff out. So any questions on the newsletter sign up? Yes, uh, there's a question. Why is the top box uh, shorter than the other one? So what are the differences in like the padding or the margin or whatever? Uh, the top box. I think that's referring to like the one with- Oh, the, oh, 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 yeah. yeah like, yeah. I, I think I just select, selected 
I didn't grab the, the medium padding. So again, this is built into Frost. Each one of these steps is 20 pixels. And so for example, like that's 20 pixel padding. This is 40, 60, 80, and 100. Um, so like we could see if we did 100, it puts 100 all the way around it. Now, if you want it uh, on the sides at 100, but the top, not so much, uh, WordPress allows you to unlink them to where you could do something like this, which is always super helpful. So you've got the 100 pixels padding on the left and the right, and then the 20 on the top. Uh, now to demonstrate, oops, what I was talking about with the responsiveness, let's see if I can swing this. I'm going to duplicate this just to make sure. So this box up here has 100 pixels padding. I'm going to inspect and get a little bit nerdy here. We can see, so that box has all of this right here. So these are the, the presets that are um, built within the theme JSON file. Now, if I click on one of these, you can see what this uh, preset actually does is inside a theme JSON, it's defined using the clamp function, which says uh, a normal view, like 100, which is like the max, but reduce it down to 60 pixels on smaller view. So what I'll do is I'll pull this out of this and we can see the 100 pixels that is around the entire group. As I reduce this, it responds down so that it's not 100 pixels because 100 pixels on a phone would look really, really bad. And like your text would like literally take up six lines. And so this is what's called intrinsic design, which is sort of setting things up in a way where uh, you don't have to do like a media query. Like, you know, if it's under a certain amount of pixels, only add this kind of padding. Uh, and so that clamp function is called, uh, it's part of the fluid spacing uh, system that Frost leverages. And so uh, as, as you can see, even on the ones below it, um, everything breaks down nicely. So. Other questions? I do not see any other questions right now, Brian. 